Well, some days it's been good, same, some days it's been rough. What gets you through? Talking to my family, talking to my therapist, and using my coping skills. Do you mind sharing Listening that? to music and singing. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn to pieces. It's my offering. The unifying characteristic for children at the village is that they've experienced um, significant early trauma. When everybody's circling around you and putting their hands in me like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Do you need help? It's awkward. When you're here, you, you're with a group of people who understand they're actually going through most of the same things like a chameleon almost. You're not a different person. Your story's not new to anybody. And it's not like, oh my gosh, I feel so sorry for you. They're like, yeah, I understand. Like, they're not, and you're, you know they're not lying when they say that. Every child that admits here um, comes here in crisis. And the child to survive that event has um, come up with their own set of safety mechanisms. Their fight or flight has led them to be um, physically aggressive. So I might get out of a situation by hitting you, or I might get out of a situation by cussing at you or you know, acting out in some way. You know, we exist to help the child find a better way to respond to those situations, to teach new, um, acceptable ways that a child can you know, address what they're experiencing, but do it in a way that's safe, that they can be in a, in a community setting. So the great thing about horses is that they are fight or flight animals. So they are prey animals and they keep themselves safe. So they will either run or fight. And our kids are very similar to that, where they've been put in situations where they've had to learn how to survive. And our horses give them real-time feedback about where they are energy-wise. So if you are in a really bad mood or having a frustrating day, the horse will give you that kind of attitude back. If you take a second, kind of center yourself. What did you do the last time? the horse will respond accordingly. I believe he's walking. You go, girl. He bonded with him because he said he's just like me. He doesn't like to be touched much, and he doesn't like people in a space. And Harry sets a big boundary. They just connected, and it's just been one of those great relationships. Uh, we wrote a bunch of bad things people have told us, and what we've told other people. Mm -hmm. and what, did, what did we do after that? We wrote a bunch of good things. They are the exact opposite. All right, and so it's a treatment center, but it is uh, full of nature, um, and we like to use our farm and our environment as a way of healing the children. Our campus is on 270 acres of farmland. Um, I've had many parents and um, kids say it looks like a camp. What I like most about the village is I get to go swimming and go on outings. Well, horsing, horses, and riding my bike. The children each get a bike when they come to Child Help, and they can take that home with them. We have two barns, the horse barn. There's another barn over there. The Animal Care Center, which is our sheep and our goats and our chickens. Uh, we started with all uh, prey animals, uh, because uh, prey animals are very attuned to your body language. That's a real struggle for a lot of our children, is not knowing how they how their actions are being perceived. They are, you know, they're just very impulsive. So the animals help them to focus their impulsivity and maybe control it. We have 270 acres here and we have about nine miles of hiking trails. There's some stress reduction uh, benefits to being in nature. Studies have shown that. There's also attention uh, restoration benefits from uh, being in nature, and which is especially beneficial in school settings when you are having to focus so much and then you go out into nature that kind of restores that ability to focus again. I try, when we're hiking, for instance, I will stop and then I'll count to 15 seconds and I want you to notice using your senses what you can see or hear or smell or touch around you. They kind of build an awareness of what it is to be still, first of all, and be mindful and uh, also take in more of what's happening around them. Woo, that was really good teamwork. And I think when you provide them the opportunities to 
grow through different activities. Then it starts to kind of come through the treatment part of it too. They're starting to learn they can trust themselves. Um, hopefully through the continuity that we provide here at Child Help, um, they can begin to trust staff and adults. Um, we have playgrounds everywhere, um, basketball courts, swings, swimming pool. And the idea is that you're coming for treatment, but we also want the kids to be kids. A lot of them haven't been able to do that in a long time. We serve children ages 5 to 14, school on campus. We have a year round. Two full-time psychiatrists on staff, 24-hour nursing care, um, the widest array of therapies of any place I've ever seen, you know, to include art therapy, music therapy, play therapy, equine-assisted animal therapy in a beautiful, serene, open setting. This is a very nurturing, um, kind of like home-like environment for the kids. The children live in cottages and um, they have a living room, they have bedrooms, a kitchen area, dining area. We have big um, boards up on the walls so they can kind of see um, the routine of the day, which is very important, um, especially when it comes to developing trust with the children. Well, one of the things we do every day is they ask us if what, what's our goal today? And I would tell them like, my goal today is not to get upset or get mad. And they taught, they taught me like coping skills. And one of the things that, that like made me get it was my therapy sessions. Yeah. I improved on thinking before I act or thinking before I speak. And it's just the things they taught me that helps me calm down really works. And what has being here helped? Um, I don't get in that much trouble. I don't really talk back as much as I used to. And I don't really fight as much. So what was the turning point? When my own, um, when part of my family said they would adopt me. It made me feel more happy. And it gave me hope and it made me feel better sense of belonging. Yeah. Well, my therapist helps by talking to me, giving me advice, and because I feel like there's someone who can understand me and I can count on. That emotional connection is literally the most powerful tool that we have. I was fighting and doing things I wasn't supposed to, cursing. Can you tell me one or two of those coping skills? Deep breath. And listening to music. I remember one of your very first days here, you had a hard time. So to see you today, it's amazing to me to watch you lead those kids. Good job, guys. Well, you know, many times the children are gonna replay the actions that they've seen in their own lives. And we exist to interrupt that cycle, support children in finding a different way so that it stops here. Um, we are literally changing the world. You know, a, a child today in a couple generations is 30 people or 50 people. What do you hope to be doing in 10 years or so? The Army. I'm on a horse farm, and I also want to be an actress. College or the, a singer. I want to become a computer engineer. Since our visit last summer, all four of the teens we spoke with have been able to move on and leave the village. We wish them well now in their journeys. To find out more about Alice C. Tyler Village of Child Help, visit childhelpvirginia.org.